they may cause death, destruction, and all kinds of general mayhem on film. But these big screen baddies happen to be real lookers in real life. From makeup to prosthetics to CGI, it takes a lot to transform these stunners into the stuff of nightmares. When she won the part of Captain Phasma in Star Wars The Force Awakens, Gwendolyn Christie made history as the first on-screen female Star Wars villain. Although the only way you'd know it is by her voice. In fact, she never takes off her helmet once in the whole movie and is only briefly glimpsed during The Last Jedi. But there was good reason for that. Christie told Moms in Charge, I was actually lucky enough to be given a couture suit, so the armor was made to fit my dimensions exactly. I just love that we maintain the practicality of what she was wearing. You put this armor on and you feel rigid and uncompromising. Phasma proved a hit even with notoriously hard-to-please Star Wars fans, many of whom were disappointed at Christie's limited screen time in the two movies. The 6'3 actress and model rose to fame playing Brienne of Tarth on Game of Thrones, flying the flag for taller women. She told Rolling Stone, Occasionally I get messages from women saying that I've brought them some joy, and that's unbelievably thrilling. Rafe Fiennes almost turned down the chance to play Lord Voldemort in the Harry Potter films, only finally agreeing to take the role after his sister convinced him it was worth his while. It's a good thing she did, too, since his performance might well be one of the most underrated villainous turns in Hollywood history. The boy who lived. Come to die. After seeing the final installment in the long-running franchise, veteran film critic Emmanuel Levy said, The endlessly versatile Rafe Fiennes gives an astonishing, multi-nuanced performance as the Dark Lord, one that, with some justice, should earn him a Supporting Actor Oscar nomination. Maybe it isn't such a surprise that the Academy failed to recognize Fiennes for his performance as Voldemort, considering he was pretty much unrecognizable in the role. This is thanks largely to the stellar work of makeup artist Mark Coulier, who made the normally handsome finds look nothing less than terrifying. Voldemort's slit-like nose was created digitally, but Coulier did as much as he could practically, creating eyebrow blockers and temporary vein tattoos for finds. In a 2016 interview with Bustle, Coulier recalled, It worked really well. We covered his whole head and veins in about 10 minutes. Australian actor Eric Bana is probably best known for starring as Bruce Banner in Ang Lee's botched attempt at bringing the Hulk to the big screen. But he's been working quietly and steadily in Hollywood ever since. Bana followed 2003's Hulk with appearances in films like the historical epic Troy and Steven Spielberg's Munich. But Bana has become a lot less prominent since, and his retreat from the A-list seems to have begun after the release of 2009's Star Trek. Not that there was anything wrong with his performance. In fact, some fans believe his Nero to be one of the greatest Trek villains of all time. But many people simply didn't know that it was him underneath all that Romulan makeup. Luckily, he doesn't seem to mind. Speaking to Huff Post in 2013, Vanna said, I still get people today who just saw Star Trek and had no idea. Someone just told me yesterday, you're in Star Trek, and when it came out I had no idea it was you. That's a huge kick. No, I love that. George Lucas's Star Wars prequels have always been divisive, but they did at least give us one of the saga's most memorable villains, Darth Maul. Introduced in 1999's The Phantom Menace, Maul's physical performer, Ray Park, trained for 15 hours a day to get his martial arts skills up to scratch for the role. But it wasn't until he had the full makeup on that he felt truly ready. At Star Wars Celebration 2015, Park said, The look of Darth Maul the Sith Lord I think was cool. I think with the makeup and the horns and the lenses and the teeth, you just can't help being naughty, you know? Despite seemingly meeting his end during The Phantom Menace, Maul has reappeared in the Star Wars The Clone Wars animated television series and in 2018's Solo, A Star Wars Story. British actress Naomi Harris is probably best known for playing Miss Moneypenny in the most recent James Bond movies. But prior to taking on the role of M's sultry secretary, she played Calypso in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Harris made her debut as the sea goddess's mortal avatar, Tia Dalma, in 2006's Dead Man's Chest and reprised the role in At World's End a year later. Don't tell me you didn't. 
I'm giant. At the time. <laughs> Fair enough, all right, Julie. After seeing At World's End, Orlando Sentinel film critic Roger Moore said, It's hard to see or hear Naomi Harris, the lovely 30-year-old London-born character actress, behind those black teeth, those blue-stained lips, those hundred-year dreadlocks in Pirates of the Caribbean. When Harris sat down for an interview with Moore in 2007, she described the routine she had to go through before shooting. She said, black lipstick, black eyeshadow, some tribal markings, and gold and dirt on the face. The teeth were prosthetic teeth that you just clip in and out. Oh, and I also had to fill my mouth with vegetable dye before each take. The idea was that Tia Dalma is kind of oozing ink and evil.